My name is Sabina Brennan and you are listening to Super Brain, the podcast for everyone with a brain. The last couple of episodes have focused on social media, a place where it is very challenging to get the nuances of conversation. Jokes are often misinterpreted and subtleties like irony and sarcasm can fall through the cracks, leading to fallouts and fireworks. So for this week's booster shot, I thought I'd take a little look at some face to face human interaction, in particular, our ability to assess someone's sincerity. How do we tell whether someone is lying or not? Now, I've often explained that social interaction, like just having a conversation with someone, is mentally stimulating and it's also cognitively demanding. There's an awful lot going on during even the simplest back and forth banter. In addition to assimilating the surface information, like what do those words actually mean, your brain is interpreting lots of other signals and data from body language, facial expressions, etc. On top of that, your brain is also making assessments as to whether the person you are speaking to is telling you the God's honest or porky pies. Now, for a lot of those assessments that your brain is making, it's using what I spoke about in Monday's episode. You know, it's using heuristics, our biases. It's using the data it has and making its best guess or on average sort of assessment. Anyway, I came across uh, some research published this year that looked at one aspect of how we make such determinations. You know, how do we decide on the sincerity of what someone is saying or whether they're lying to us? Pulling together the data from 14 experiments involving a total of seven and a half thousand British and American members of the general public, as well as some French students. The researchers consistently found that slower versus faster responses were deemed as being less sincere. Essentially, the longer time taken to respond was perceived by the listener as the speaker suppressing an automatic, quicker, more truthful response and fabricating an untruthful answer. So essentially, if you pause for thought before you answer something that, in my opinion, is wise to do in certain circumstances, people will consider your response less credible or less sincere than if you had responded immediately. Essentially, a more thoughtful, considered response is more likely to be considered a lie. (laughs) So what did their research look like? Well, the people who took part in the research. They either watched a video, they listened to an audio recording or they read an account of a person responding to a simple question where the time to response varied from immediate to a 10 second delay. They then rated the sincerity of the response they'd heard on a sliding scale. So, for example, in one of the video scenarios, they watched a police interrogation of an actor accused of stealing money at work. Now, in the fast video, the actor denied it immediately. And in the slow video, the actor denied it after five seconds. This particular study involved over 500 people who rated the fast responders as guilty 40% of the time and the slow responders as guilty 73% of the time. That's quite a difference. Now, the researchers found that this relationship between time to response and the perception of the truth of the response, they found it repeatedly across various experiments. So it would be considered a robust finding, you know, when they've replicated time and time again. With time, as they gathered more data, they started to identify situations where listeners qualified the time to response in terms of their judgment. So, for example, if the answer required mental effort or thought, such as thinking back to an episode from several years ago, the relationship was weaker between their assessment of it being a lie the longer the response, because obviously the brain was going, well, hold on a second. You need to think about that. That takes time. Another really interesting one was if the response was something socially unacceptable, like an admission of guilt. So if the actor in the scenario I mentioned earlier replied, yes, I did steal the money at work, Rather than perceiving the delay in responding with that answer as a sign of a lie, in this instance, the listeners perceived it as an acceptable delay due to the fact that the response itself, 
i.e. yes, I am guilty, I did steal that money, is something that is socially unacceptable. And so therefore, there would be a natural hesitance or a delay in responding that way. So they were just some subtleties that emerged as their data set got bigger. Now, in Monday's episode, I spoke about the shortcuts and the biases that our brain uses on a daily basis. Now, these heuristics, they allow us to make unconscious judgments without having to tax our thinking brain. This, of course, means that the brain is sort of operating in an, on average, this is the case when it comes to the speed of response from liars. So this sort of means that the brain is making these judgments based on an on average scenario. And so the brain is right in this instance. So on average, when it comes to the speed of response from liars, the brain is correct. On average, liars take longer to respond than truth tellers. And that's perfectly sufficient for the brain in many situations. Because if we were constantly having to make decisions using a full broader context about the truth or otherwise of what people are saying, we really would never get through a conversation. Our brain would be so overloaded. So in, you know, normal everyday functioning, that makes perfect sense to have these heuristics, unconscious heuristics, these unconscious on average judgments. But when it comes to things that really matter in our personal lives, in our relationships and in situations such as a courtroom where questions of guilt or innocence are decided, this heuristic, this shortcut, this bias is not accurate. It is by definition a bias. It's prone to error and it has no place in situations where the stakes are high. So for day to day stuff, as I said, those heuristics are fine. But when it comes to more important issues, we must rely on other information and not on our inherent biases, which are nothing more than our brain's best guess. But unfortunately, they are often the very times where people trust what they call their instinct, their gut feeling. And what they really mean is that they're trusting their brain's best guess, which on average will be right. But that's simply not good enough in a courtroom or anywhere where significant decisions are made or where significant relationships are at play. My name is Sabina Brennan and you have been listening to Super Brain, the podcast for everyone with a brain. My aim for Boosters is to share insights from neuroscience, psychology and from my own life that might help you to better understand why we do the things we do, how we can reach our true potential and move from just surviving to thriving in life. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover in an upcoming booster shot, please do let me know. You'll find me on Instagram at Sabina Brennan and Twitter at Sabina underscore Brennan. You can, of course, also email me at info at superbrain.ie. For the price of a coffee, you can listen to Superbrain ad free over on patreon.com forward slash superbrain. I couldn't do this show without my brilliant editor, Emily Burke, and there'd be no point in doing the show at all without you, my wonderful listeners. So thank you for tuning in today. Tune in on Monday for another fascinating interview with an inspiring guest and on Thursday for another booster shot from me. My name is Sabina Brennan. You have been listening to Superbrain, the podcast for everyone with a brain.